It's time for Twig This Week at Google. Jeff's back. Stacy's back. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about the sex compass, self-driving vehicles without a safety driver, and Google's little project for growing AI minds. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by CashFly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 453, recorded April 18th, 2018. Naked Egg Taco. This Week at Google is brought to you by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website on WordPress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month and get 15% off any new plan at wordpress.com slash twig. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show where we talk about the latest news from the Googleverse, the Facebookverse, the Twitterverse, and the Universe. Stacey Higginbotham is here from Stacey and IoT. She has an exciting day today. We'll talk about why. Ooh, very exciting. And I'm not talking about the wine dinner you're going to later today. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about Microsoft's big announcement. But we'll also uh, welcome Jeff Jarvis from the City University of New York. He's back in his office. He is a professor of journalism there. He's also at buzzmachine.com, the author of many a fine tome. He's a tomologist. Which is better or worse than being a tamale. <laughs> or a tomography. Mm. Uh, so this uh, kind of surprised me on Windows Weekly. And uh, and they said you were tweeting all about it. You're very excited about this. Microsoft announced a secure IoT hardware software play called Azure Sphere. Yes, it is a three-way play. So there is a MCU microcontroller. There is a OS, secure OS that sits on top of the microcontroller. Most people were very excited because this is a Linux-based distribution. It's not it's Windows not embedded. Windows. Wow. <laughs> and then there is a cloud element, uh, which is the, what do they call it? The secure cloud or something. And what all this is, is this is designed to solve a lot of the problems with connected devices. And these are not computers, servers, things that have like official big chips, big chips in them. They're, they're things like washing machines, microwaves, not actually wearables because there's an A7 in there, but uh, they have microcontrollers. So these tiny, smaller chips that don't have a lot of processing power, except this one does. So it's, it's a little different. It's certificate-based authentication and it's got a secure element on the chip. So what's happening here is you're like, you put this in your device, it's going to have its own it's going to be basically auditable, secure, and you can actually update it from over the air, send everything via encrypted traffic. And it's it's actually a really pretty awesome step forward for IoT security. The big catches are, here they come. These are still pretty significant chips. There's an, there, a microcontroller is usually very small, but they have an ARM A7 chip on there. So that's that's actually a big chip. So this is not for like sensors. This is going to be in de devices that have substantial enough batteries. It's not, it's not light bulbs. It's doorbells. It's actually, cameras. It's routers. light bulbs would work. Really? Oh, um, small because, enough for that? Well, yeah, it's small enough for that, and you can plug a light bulb in. I mean, it's oh, that's right. So you're thinking? Oh, I see low power devices and battery powered. I, I'm thinking. I'm I'm like looking around for the sensors that are scattered in my desk right. drawer, but like a door window sensor. Um, Got it. And the other thing is this doesn't do anything for all of the devices that are out there now. So right. this is coming in the future, end of year, you should start seeing devices that have this on there. And then the third thing is for this to actually work, Microsoft has to partner with the chip guys and the chip guys have to put Microsoft's IP on their silicon and adopt it. MediaTek is making bit... the initial uh, batch of chips. Although yes, Qualcomm has said they're interested. Yes, uh, yes, Qualcomm's yeah. interested. I think... Uh, I so, bet Samsung is not because they've got their own platform. They have a secure chip for their Arctic platform. So they have Arctic modules and they have an Arctic S module, which is their secure module. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. ARM is a partner for this. So if you license ARM stuff, you can just 
wiggle the Microsoft IP block in there. Microsoft and says also- li- licensing will be inexpensive, mm-hmm. but I think they make their money because it uses the Azure cloud. Well, so this is where it gets fun. Um, they, you, this does use the Azure cloud. You pay a one-time fee for the chip and the license, and it's a 10-year life. And what will happen is you can use Azure Cloud, so you can send the data from the secured device anywhere you want. So you don't have to use Azure. Where I think this gets maybe more interesting is Microsoft has an Edge product, Microsoft IoT Edge, I believe it's called. And this is for like intermittent computing environments, like think about like a container ship or anything where the power and connectivity might come off for off and on. You're going to need a platform for that that can handle those on and off environments. It's going to be easier to tie it to Microsoft's IoT Edge than it might be for you to tie it to AWS Greengrass, for example. So that's where things are going to start. It'll still work with AWS Greengrass, but you might have to work a little bit harder. Does that make sense? It's my guess that really the goal here is to compete with Amazon and Google uh, and to provide something that really is security first, which is something Amazon and Google really aren't. Uh, no, Amazon has a chance with uh, free RTOS, but they haven't done anything there. Yeah. So, and I think this is, this actually is really good news for consumers. Uh, it's, it's Microsoft saying we're going to, this is an important thing for us, IOT, and we're going to make a secure platform. And that means you'd be able to look and I'm sure they'll have some badge or some sort of certification and they'll be on the box. And you'll have this sense that, yeah, not only is this a secure system, is Microsoft going to provide patches to the uh, operating system as needed? Oh, yes. That's part of the security. So, yes, over the 10-year life of the chip. And that's really actually a hugely important thing for IoT is having such a long-lived support element. Although, as a consumer, I'm like, yay, 10 years. That sounds reasonable. But then I'm like, I have had washing machines that yeah, last for that 13 long. years. <laughs> it isn't that <laughs> long, really. But it's so, better than anything out there right now. And, and I even, you know where this really becomes valuable is these Chinese companies that are making these really insecure cameras and, and other IoT devices, routers. They can, for a reasonable fee, put this Microsoft thing in there, saves them a lot of development time, and consumers in the States will look at it and say, okay, I could trust this, even though I never heard of Xiaomi or whoever. Right, this $20 device that compares yeah. to all the $100 devices. Right. Well, it's got... Asher's fears in it. Yeah, I no, think that's this true. What's it going to cost to license that? Uh, that is not disclosed, but I did talk to someone in the community and they were like, it's a bit pricey, but you oh, know, really? that'll change over time. So it's not going to be a $20 camera anymore. It'll be a. Well, $25. No, I don't think. Well, pricey for this segment is a few dollars. Well, really? it's a few cents. I mean, yeah. so when you're looking at your chip pricing, it's a few yeah. cents. But if it's like an extra buck, then that adds like that's 10 a, to 20 bucks on your right. end. Yeah. Um, anyway, I don't know if that was way like super nerdy for y'all. So I think uh, I think that uh, Microsoft was saying it was not expensive. But of course, that's all in the eye of the, okay. of the beholder. Yeah, expensive is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that, but what it, I think this is really good news. And it, it, for a few reasons. Uh, it, it makes it easier for companies to make secure IT, IoT devices without doing all that back-end R&D. It, and it makes competition for Amazon and Google uh, and Apple to some degree. And it encourages them to put security first, all of which is really good for the general ecosystem. I think this is – I'm really happy to see Microsoft do this. And it's kind of a it surprise. Is. It's a little bit out of nowhere. Um, they've been working on it for four years. Yeah, they, they had something called Sopris that they were working on, and we were talking. This about. is this is the rules for Project Sopris. Yeah. So Galen, who did that, and it's all based on their uh, oh, what's their gaming console? Xbox. Xbox. Sorry. You better <laughs> learn that before you talk learned. to Galen. By the way, I talked to. He's already. Are you talking in the can? It's in the can. It's in the can. Can. It's in. So the next has it. Uh, the next uh, IOT uh, Stacy and IOT will be the interview with Galen. What's his name? Galen Hunt. Who is the the guy? He's this. the guy who came up with his seven security principles that he was designing for. And That's then great. If, if you thought the stuff I just said was interesting, I talk about it even more with him. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft's uh, president, uh, Brad Smith, said he expects nine billion IoT devices to ship this year. I'm with Brad. Nine billion with a B. Hey, so this is this is probably the fastest growing technology segment ever, 
and as it stands right now, is a massive threat to security. So mm -hmm. this is a big deal. And I, I, f I feel like Microsoft really putting a stake in the sand. And it goes right up against Google and Amazon because those are, the, those are the other two big companies. And as I said, Apple wants to be in this, but they, but they haven't made anything particularly compelling yet. Although I Apple will be security and privacy first, right? Yes, but I think this might actually go up more against Samsung and Apple. Oh, interesting. And yes, a bit Amazon. So really what they're trying to do is, and even the chip players, none of the chip players have gotten their act together on this. The closest thing we have, because this market's so fragmented. So I, I think this is really, yes, it should drive Amazon and Google to be more secure, but I would say Samsung actually makes these modules. Yeah, Apple already yeah. does its own chips. They have the yeah. MFI program. Yeah. Samsung, I'd forgotten completely. But they with their yeah, acquisition of smart things and all the devices they make, they're a big player in this. Yeah, they just integrated all their all their appliances and smart things. They're in the process, like right. as we talk, of integrating that all in together. So if you have Samsung appliances, you can start doing some really cool stuff. Like your lights will flick on when your dryer is done. Okay, maybe that's not really cool. I think it's cool. We now know where Marissa Meyer's been. She's hanging out yeah. at Google. <laughs> well, sort of. That's, that's weird. <laughs> uh, she's renting her old Google office. Well, I don't know, was it her old office? It was the original Palo Alto office, I think. Oh, Google's old office in Palo Alto. It's Google's old office. Oh, yeah, how I think funny. It's that, that fabled one in downtown Palo Alto well, a lot she, of places. She said she'd worked there because she said every time I go up the steps, she it, did. Okay. Yeah, it comes back. Big article. This is actually not the one to look at. Let's go back to the New York Times article because this is this is a rehashed version of the the big article in the New York Times about her. And yeah, she says, uh, let me see if I can find the quote because uh, she says every time she goes up the steps, it reminds her of the early days. There it is. By the way, great picture, of Marissa Meyer. Yeah. She looks relaxed, happy. She talks a lot about Yahoo. She said, you know, I had high hopes. Uh, of turning around Yahoo, but ultimately it was a legacy business and all I could mm -hmm. do is slow down the death. <laughs> Absolutely true. It was, yeah. the, it was the last old media business. Yeah. Um, she, uh, she is looking, I, I guess this is kind of to be expected to be invest, I guess, and be a startup person. Um, well, Lumi Labs. Yeah, that's it. Lumi is a Finnish word that means snow. She says, I like snow a lot. <laughs> it's a good yeah, name. That was, that, was, that was a silly little quote. I'm like, and I just love snow. I'm like, huh? 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 Okay. So it, this is actually the office, she said, where I started my career in 1999. It's also where PayPal started. So there's a lot of good juju here. Coming back, it reminds me of what Google felt like in these early moments. I remember, this was a telling statement. I remember running up those steps because if you didn't get here fast enough, on Saturday morning, <laughs> somebody in the world was going to get worse search results and it might change their life for the worse. Wow. <laughs> I don't, I'm not running up anybody's steps on Saturday morning. <laughs> That's like the old Disney joke. If you don't come to work on Saturday, don't bother coming to work on Sunday. <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, she talks about Larry and Sergey in the early days. I'm glad the Times asked her this. She says, Larry and Sergey just yelled at us until we became what they needed us to become and get done what they needed to be done. And so I said, look, she was employee 20, I think, right? Look, I'm just going to rinse and repeat that, hopefully with less yelling. We ultimately brought in management coaches and all kinds of mentors. <laughs> wow. Wow. She said, I always knew what Larry and Sergey wanted. I knew what looked good. Good, good looked like to them and so i never got discouraged by them saying wait i don't think this is ready or i think this is overly ready overly ready overly Google has ready never released an overly Trying ready product in hard. its life <laughs> at a startup you never really know when you should launch something so google but the, built the philosophy of launching early and often try things out see what works she said uh, the, the first phase of the company, when you're in tens of people, the, the idea itself either attracts people or it doesn't. People are there because they think the problem you're trying to solve is just that important. Then getting from 100 employees to 1,000, you have to be very careful. You don't want to, this was really interesting. You don't want to pay them too much because you don't want somebody who's there for the wrong reasons. You want to get people who are really aligned with the mission you make sure they're fairly compensated, but not necessarily motivated by that compensation. That's not true anymore, is it? No. Well, she says that's up to a thousand. 
She says, then oh, around 1,000 people, the culture and the mission become self-reinforcing. At Google, I always ask new people, why did you come? When we were about 1,200 people, all of a sudden, for the first time, I actually heard the answer, I came for the culture. She said, wow. I had a strategy, both at Google and Yahoo, of meet salaries, not beat salaries. It's the trade-off between, this is a great line, it's the trade-off between mercenaries and missionaries. You want a true believer is not somebody who's there for the money. Mercenaries and missionaries. I love that. As, uh, as for Yahoo, she said, well, I was, I'd been working at Google for 13 years. She doesn't mention the fact that she was kind of demoted or pushed aside a little bit right before she went to Yahoo. I'd been on search for 10 of those years, just recently made the changeover to focus on maps. Maybe this is her way of saying that. And I was like, you know, I'm just not sure I want to be like the 50-year-old search girl. I always had huge respect for Yahoo as a company. When we were here in this office, we dreamed of maybe getting the Yahoo contract, maybe one day powering <laughs> Yahoo Search. In 1999, Yahoo was the internet. He's, she said, there, I, there's the problem. There's, there's the, the problem. entire problem. In 1999. 99. <laughs> and I knew that while there were a lot of things going wrong for the board and leadership at Yahoo, there were a lot of really good per people still there working on products. She wanted, she says, to return it to the preeminence in, in its users' daily lives where it used to be where people were on Yahoo for half an hour to many hours a day. I'm proud of what we achieved at Yahoo. That said, we had a quickly decaying legacy business, and all we really managed to do was offset the declines. She talks a little bit about the activist uh, Dan Loeb and uh, Carl Icahn and how that was really focused on short-sightedness. And She was mad because they forced uh, Yahoo to sell some of their Alibaba steak which would have been worth a lot more had they held, held on to it. She tells an anecdote about building something with her son with magnet tiles. Stacey, you probably oh, know those what, are fun. Yeah, it's yeah. not Lego, but it, what is it? It's like magnetic Lego? They're like plastic covered magnets that you build stuff with. I'm like, they're flat. You build the, I'm like, deep. They deep, look deep, like, deep. Yeah. <laughs> she said, we built this giant kind of castle complex and it collapsed and my son was crestfallen. I stopped and said, Son, it's a teaching moment. There's nothing to be upset about. We built it, and it worked once, and we'll just rebuild it. Kid, fail fast. Fail yeah. often. Yeah. You're going to regret yeah. those words. She said that was one <laughs> just of my... Just don't become a civil engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> you don't want bridges to fail even once. Uh, she said, I would say one of my key learnings for Yahoo is that timing is everything. We can make the products really good, but regaining the contextual relevance that was afforded to Yahoo in 1999 in the early 2000s was difficult. Difficult, absolutely. She said an interesting thing about Me Too. She said, uh, as important as these conversations are, I hope we're able to have them in a concentrated way, fix the problems, and then move on. Because what I don't want to do is dissuade the next set of leaders, entrepreneurs, and executives from even entering the field. I don't want us 15 years from now to turn around and be like, wait, how come there's so few women VPs at these companies? Oh, right, because in the summer of 2018, all this Me Too stuff was happening. It caused people to say, huh, I'm not getting in that business. Okay, Me Too is everywhere. That's just asinine. Okay. There's there no go. business set <laughs> aside from point. this yet. That's a but good like, point. <laughs> come on, Marissa. It's not just the tech industry. Even podcasting. Even in podcasting. Even in podcasting. What are some uh, of your tips for perseverance when the chips are stacked against you? Develop a thick skin. Bradley Cooper, the actor, once said, if you ever want to feel really, really bad about yourself, go read about yourself online. <laughs> and then she quotes the last line of a book I bet you've read your daughter, Rosie Revere Engineer. Life may have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. <laughs> uh, end scene so uh that's marissa meyer back at it and i guess she's it's doing, an interview it's a it's actually I've you always, know what? i've always liked marissa and respected marissa and i wish her the by all means the best what i loved about she's it was very, very colloquial and not forced not uh she didn't yeah, hold back this was, was no, there was no pr person no it was very interview. genuine it was good it was her yeah. i thought okay i agree Kendrick Lamar wins a Pulitzer Prize for music. The first. Damn. Damn. Sorry. That's right. Damn. 
That's his. Uh, that's. I don't know if that was the album that won, but uh, it is. It is. He uh, he's the first hip hop artist to win a Pulitzer. You know, traditionally the Pulitzers go to <laughs> jazz and classical music. You know, uh, Slate did a wonderful. It wasn't wonderful. Is too much. Slate did an interesting article. They interviewed the two other nominees in classical music for the Pulitzer about Kendrick winning. So it was kind of a fun article. That's interesting. What did they say? They ba basically were like. Dude, he's awesome, and we really like his work. And one of them was kind of influenced by some of his stuff, and they were really excited for him. Which Kendrick is I, not your typical rapper. He talks about a uh, lot of stuff, deep stuff, real stuff. Um, you know, it's 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 hip hop, but it's but I think that he is absolutely a poet and uh, and pushes the envelope. So, and of course, he got a Grammy, right? Album of the. Did, oh, no, he didn't get a Grammy. He didn't get the Grammy. That was... Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, but he got a Pulitzer. It's like somebody, the New Yorker says, it's kind of like Bob Dylan getting the Nobel Prize. Yeah, that's actually what I thought of. I was like, oh, Times are changing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that interesting? He didn't get the Grammy, but he got the Pulitzer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that tells you something about the Grammys. And then the Can and Cannes Film Festival saying, well... Netflix can't be in the Cannes Film Festival because their movies aren't on a screen in a theater. Well, they're trying to force what? them to put them in French theaters, and they, they refuse. Yeah, they say. Okay, yeah, they say I didn't cinema even read any is of these a theatrical stories. experience. You didn't read that? I I just I I couldn't. You couldn't I, care less the outrage. I could not care at all yeah. about this. There's a so. little too much outrage in this world. Uh, I'm sorry, but. Uh, you are, you are not uh, in the theater, and yet I have to say some of the stuff, I like the Meyerowitz stories, uh, uh, pretty amazing stuff. Uh, really good work being done by Netflix and Amazon and others. And just because they're not shown in a in a theater doesn't mean they're not cinema. Well, that you know what that is going to change. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much that hurts uh, Netflix to not be at Cannes. Oh. Well, isn't there Orson Welles' daughter something, something? This, these are the headlines that I've skipped. So from the headlines. <laughs> Ripped Orson from the headlines. <laughs> has something that they want shown. His daughter is pushing for this, but it was a Netflix deal. Netflix acquired yeah. it, and she wants it shown at Cannes, and the French are like, no. It hurts the creators. What? It doesn't hurt Netflix no, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. What, yeah, what does Netflix get out of Cannes? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, if you want a distribution... You know, going to a but festival is important, but they they are no, distribution. If you were, but if you're trying to pitch your services to like a famous actor or director, they really mm, want they want to be a con. cachet. Yeah. Uh, first, what do they you want a golden something. The well, go yeah, first palm they want cash, door. But then they want the you get cachet. the palm door, the golden palm. Palm door. Okay. The palm door. Have you ever done uh, can Leo? Yeah. No. Have you? You probably have. No. You're a critic. No, you could have no, gone. Never have. Stand hey, there with a paparazzi. Have to wear heels. Oh, I go yeah. to VidCon instead. VidCon is the, the you know what Netflix same time. Go to VidCon instead. Yeah, VidCon is much more, much more with it, much more. You really, it's fascinating to see the world change. And and to see some people dragging their heels as it does. Mm -hmm. I'm sympathetic. So, have you used Google's new book search? I was trying to. I was trying yes. to test it out. I couldn't, I, used I couldn't come up with the right question. I used it, so it was fun because um, we were talking about this on Twit, but we were also talking about uh, individualism versus collectivism, and how the United States, where we really have um, this sense of individualism, you know, is is has. You know, I just learned that there are 176 million cameras in China. Uh, you, did you see the 60 Minutes on Sunday about uh, how they, they found a, a currency manipulator in China uh, in, at a concert of yes. 60,000 people with face recognition? Yeah, he thought he'd be safe, but no. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're, they're really moving fast in face recognition. So we talked how, a little how, bit. How, yeah, how did, how did Google Book Search get to this topic? I'm... I can't wait. <laughs> so I asked, this is, you go to books.google.com slash talk to books. And this is Ray Kurzweil. He talked about it at TED this year. Uh, mm -hmm. and he, this is Ray Kurzweil. And he said, instead of doing a search, you're, you're going to speak to it in sentences. 
and you're going to get an, so I, I, I can't remember what I wrote. Something like, how does individualism, or let's, and I can't remember what I wrote, collectivism affect our views of privacy, say? That would be an interesting subject, right? How do individualism, collectivism affect our views of privacy? And look, I got some really interesting. And related, another Ooh, way of thinking about individualism fast, versus... Yeah, did you see that? Well, that's probably because it was cashed. Another way of thinking about individualism oh. versus collectivism is to consider the degree of privacy a person seeks. This is from, oddly enough, occupational therapy with elders. But then there's Stephen Breyer, former Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer's active liberty. Others find connections between personal privacy and individualism, and the privacy may encourage nonconformity and more free expression. Or... Privacy impact assessment, but well, that rolls off the tongue. Uh, so this, so that, you know, I thought that was actually pretty good. And if you were I, a student and you were thinking about these issues, you would get some interesting references anyway. I tried it for a question that I'm constantly trying to figure out and think about. We talk about it a lot, actually. And I asked it, does the U.S. legal system focus on intent or outcome? Oh, that's good. Less Less about finding, more for finding things to read because I'm, I'm trying to focus on what happens with the U.S. legal system. So it pulled up, the first two were not useful, but it, they started actually getting more useful over time, including a book, Liability for Crimes Involving Artificial Intelligence Systems. Nah, which I'm like, there you go. Hot diggity. Bring it. Oh man, this is good for research. So I just put in, um, tell me about moral panic and technology. There you go. Oh, Bingo. Jeff, are you quoted? <laughs> did you get anything good in there? Yeah, I did. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I actually, I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. Also, or, scary. Well. <laughs> this is what journalists do. <laughs> one of the things I've really been thinking about lately is, you know, artificial intelligence is like blockchain. It's the thin spread of peanut butter that you put on top of anything you want to sell to the marketplace to make it sexy. And well, I really wonder, you know, we, we bandy this AI around an awful lot these days. And I really wonder how close to, I mean, are we, is it really AI? I mean, is it really, is it, it or is it just so, Eliza? So there, there's, there's words you can use, like artificial intelligence can mean lots of things, but if you do things like machine learning, that actually means a very specific thing. Yes. So. Which is really what we're talking about. It, maybe we should ask people to be a little bit more Say specific. Machine learning. Machine, and, but but people machine, learning, machine is a, learning is a method, not a not an outcome. Right. And, AI and is the outcome, impl it implies the outcome of artificial intelligence. I don't know if it delivers that outcome. Uh, and it's also like, how do we, what kind of intelligence do we value and how do we, like, computers are already artificially intelligent when it comes to solving things like chess problems or anagrams. You know, yeah, so but, but chess, see, playing chess well or even go well is really little more than math. <clears throat> I think it's the ability. Well, chess is the ability mm. to foresee and try That's, the future. Chess is, is absolutely math. It's purely deterministic. And computers win at chess with pure brute force. The thing that was interesting about go is you can't win with brute force because there's too many combinations. So and, you have to have some intuition about what a position means. But I'm... I'm not convinced that that's still not essentially. Uh, they're but they're teaching themselves. Matching. That's that's yeah. what's interesting is the intelligence comes from teaching themselves, and there's this idea that you can train. I mean, being able to train a computer to recognize this on their own and work towards an outcome that you're asking it to work towards, that's actually pretty cool. I mean, again, that's valuing one type of intelligence over another. We could I'm just have, not impressed with the progress we've made. Maybe that's really what I'm saying. Oh, Leo. <laughs> and and we, you know, and this comes up with self-driving cars now, right? Um, because uh, that's a form of, uh, what would you, is that, can I say that's AI? Self-driving cars? Yeah. I mean, you can say lots of things are AI. <laughs> okay, but if you had level four autonomy, that would be AI? What people think of as AI? If yes. you give the car a goal and it gets there, I guess so. I can't level four. Which what what is level the, four is level complete self-driving? Oh, we, I thought that was level five. 
Well, four-ish, five-ish. It's in there. <laughs> five is if you're self-driving and don't kill anybody. <laughs> yeah, four, uh, okay. You kill, like, a, words mean you things, kill guys. people <laughs> after every 5,000 miles. You know, just one of those. Uh, hey, it's the price of progress. Well, what happened is we made a lot of, remember the early days of the DARPA challenge, which is the autonomous vehicle challenge. In the very early days, which was only, what, 10 years ago, the cars barely got a few feet. They would just, they would just go and drive right off the road. Uh, it very quickly, they advanced very quickly to be essentially self-driving all the way across the country within a decade. But mm -hmm. I think that might have given us false hope. Well, that's what technology does, though. I mean, think about when you had your first, I don't know, your IBM Selectrics, and then suddenly you're moving. I mean, technology seems clunky and not where you want it to be until suddenly you look around and you realize it is. And that's... that's and it becomes just, invisible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... And then, then it's not frightening anymore. But I feel like we're far from that. I don't know. That's oh, yeah. what I'm saying. But maybe it, it is a hockey stick, right? Maybe it's it seems like we did a, we did a lot really fast and now we're just stuck. We're going and then through suddenly a phase of moral go. panic. Or well, because we're, also because going we're scared, it. and I don't say that we're scared, we're, we're frightened of unknown outcomes. Jobs are affected, right. our society has changed, all these things, and we feel out of control. And then I believe we get back in control, and then we're okay. And the technology becomes um, ubiquitous and, and just part of life. And meanwhile, Google's selling DIY AI kits at Target. AI, why? <laughs> so, um, I, I would say the technology, and I'll just go back to this because this is near and dear to my heart. Um, the technology got really good, and now we're kind of in a space where we're trying to advance the actual underlying hardware and software governing AI. So we saw this huge epic leap in like 20, from 2012 to 2015 in facial recognition because we were like, hey, we can apply this to GPUs. And then we got new ways to apply it to more cores on a GPU. So right now where we are is we're now, we've, we've done all that work there. Now we're trying to build new types of learning, self-learning models for computers. And that's going to, they're figuring that out. And then once they've got that, they're going to have to figure out hardware optimized for it because this still does take a lot of computing power. So I don't think it's really a moral panic thing so much as it's like a we hit a technology wall and we're going there. I I don't know how I missed this AI Y thing. This is pretty cool from Google. It is pretty cool. They've uh, had much, this for a while. Yeah. I, I everyone yeah, was I didn't so even excited know. about this and I can't figure out why. <laughs> um so the idea well, but they started selling it in Target, which I think is Right, tele, and they is, added a pie. Is kind so. of, yeah, so it's got there's two of them. One's for sound and one's for uh vision. The sound one has a Raspberry Pi Zero. The Vision one has a Raspberry Pi 2. You could literally build your own intelligent speaker and experiment with voice recognition. So how much expertise do you have to have in what area to do this? Well, see, that's an interesting question. They, they, I think they're pushing it as a step, part of a STEM program, right? I think anyone can actually do this. You you have to have it. it You're walks not coding. You You're not writing any code. You are actually working through some code, but oh. it's they they show it to you, so you can. I I don't know if you can cut and paste or if you just. It, but it's not hard. It, yeah, but it gives you a start. Are, and the the voice one's been around for a while. the The other one is newer, I believe. The computer vision one. Oh, I see. So this also, this just ties. So I see one of the examples here that you showed was was uh, picturing an apple, and it's giving the probability. So that's going. So this is a this is a way to get into all of Google's pretty, cool. pretty tremendous, <laughs> pretty <laughs> tremendous um, yeah. uh, APIs. And and so yet, I want I want to see how to teach my journalism students to tie into these things. This I think either for fifth graders or journalism students, you probably could do this. <laughs> but not us we are too yeah, stupid yeah, yeah um i think you should get one and make it on the I show i will you know what let's order it let's uh or i'll go to My target sport <laughs> get over, target. Get to buy things yeah no i will buy this but i bet it isn't too hard uh and it really is up to the prof the teacher or the professor uh to add the content that would make it more about ai and more about what's involved and stuff like that but at least you got all the hardware and you can interact with it and write code and do-it-yourself cool. project for STEM education ideal for teens. You're right, Stacey. That's what it says yeah. on the when you, yeah. on the buy page. Yeah. 
Um, well, they had put it out for kind of the hacker community about a year ago because we looked at it on the show because people are like, ooh, cool. But um, I don't think it did super well there. I so, think uh, we should have a joy detector. Point the vision kit towards someone's face. Ask them to smile. Ask them to smile really big. Ask them to make a frowning face. And then, of course, they've already pre-programmed it with the machine learning. But steal it will their photo and send it to the send Russians. It to us. While you're at it. What could be the harm? <laughs> Please. I love it. She's working with a Chromebook on this, too, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. We need we need the new Heath kit. Uh, this is kind of the new Heath kit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Cool. I love it. It's in cardboard. Wait. It's got that Google, uh, you know, ethos. What is the cardboard? Oh, Heath kits, you know? They make stuff. I, yeah, I did Heath kits. Sure. Heath kits. What is a Heath kit? Oh, my oh, God. It happened again. Oh, my God. I have to drink now. Well, no. Now you can tell the rest of your audience who who are maybe not no, as No, they're as old as, as we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Heath kit. Heath kit's they're still geeky. around. They're geeky. But it was, it was a great do-it-yourself, build, build a radio, build a Geiger counter. all the parts and the instructions. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you'd have to do solder. solder. Yeah, this is all hardware stuff. You know, build a ham radio. That's the that's the ultimate Heathkit thing. Okay. Yeah, in fact, uh, I built a radio with my dad. Yeah, there you go. Maybe it was a Heathkit. It's probably a Heathkit. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, our uh, uh, guys at the uh, uh, Ham Nation show, the Hams, have their own. It's very much a Heathkit. Build your own AM ham transmitter. It's called the Pine Board Computer. Um, if you go to Bob Hiles' site, Hiles Sound. Dot com. You can read about it. Click the ham radio section. Let me scroll down a little bit here. I just put in an image from an old Heathkit catalog. So this is as Heathkit as it gets. In fact, it even has to have a warning. Don't touch this. It could kill you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it has, they have, they sell the parts. You danger, high voltage. That makes it exciting for kids. And they have the circuit diagrams and you make, and you build it. You build everything. And, uh, oh, look at the look at this link I sent you. It's just too beautiful. It's an old catalog. These were the these were the days, weren't they? This is memory. American oh, radio oh. history. Make a phonograph. Make it make a shortwave radio. That was what I always wanted to do was build a shortwave radio. Yeah. But you could literally build your own Mediterranean oak cabinet television for $119. Nice. Look at this. Well, the See? catalog is just great. So, Stacy, you weren't born when this came out, 1969, but um, there's a DW nurse, President Heathkit. Why do millions build Heathkit electronics? This was 1969. This does <laughs> really 90. This feels like 1949. I know it does, doesn't it? But the TVs are a little more advanced than that. They got a color TVs. Look at that. Look at oh. You can build a solid state. Portable black and white TV Ooh, for with a deluxe early months. American cabinet for ninety nine ninety five. Wow, I like the Mediterranean oak. I'm with you. <laughs> Four hundred fifty dollars, two year picture tube warranty and optional remote control. Look at the remote control. <laughs> it is, it is, this is wired. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, oh, but you know what? Before this, Stacy. You're not going to believe this. You had to get up out of your seat to change the channel. <laughs> yes, right, I Stacey have been told. Includes 20-foot flat wire cable. Wow. Who wow. sits you, 20 you know feet away from a 20-inch TV? The TV's this big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, Leo. Go to page 27. It's Stacy. It's the early Stacy. Oh, is Stacy in this? Yeah, she is. This is the best catalog ever. I don't know how you found this. this. The greatest Google, goddamn. Oh man, Google. there it is. IoT, Stacy. Guard your family IOT. and property. Three okay. easy to build solid state units that just plug into AC outlets. Reliable, fail safe, versatile. Always on guard for worry free security. Here's a smoke heat detector transmitter. Actuates receiver alarm if smoke or 130 degrees Fahrenheit is present. The next page is handy, handy household helpers. Oh, this was IoT. Look at this. I want this. What is this? It's uh, a solid state indoor a outdoor intercom. intercom system. Wireless oh. is a uh, Miss Hickenbotham, take a letter. Take a memo. <laughs> take a memo, Miss Hickenbotham. What was I watching? 
The other day I was watching something. Wait, why was wireless in quotation marks? They were like, that's what I wanted to. Wireless. Wireless. Oh, it's plugged in. I guess maybe that's it. I don't know. The wireless intercom. Oh my God, my parents had that lamp. Really? That one? That wooden yeah, one? That, that wooden thing. Yeah. Oh, they man. Had one. Oh. Press the push to talk button to talk, release, to listen. The PTT bar has a spring return to the listen position and a handy dictate hold position for keeping tabs on the baby or for predominantly one-way conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, below you have CB radios. <laughs> oh, that's like when you do uh, security now. That's a predominantly one-way conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, wow! This is this is the best thing I've ever is seen. It this tools and accessories for kit building it goes on forever too. Yeah, these were the but this was only 1969. That's what kind of blows me away. In uh, 1976, a few years later, my college roommate was building a kit computer in his dorm room. Wow. wow. But he'd, he'd grown up building Heath kits. So, yeah, it was this was right before the digital era began. Kind of the end of the line. And you could even build your own laboratory instrumentation. I still had, until two weeks ago, I still had a store near me where you could go in and buy, you know, resistors and capacitors and 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 special kinds of plugs and cables. It was all this electronic stuff. I don't know how they stayed in business. Well, they didn't stay in business. They just they just closed. Yeah. All these years, who we was going in buying resistors? How Halted just closed in a, in a San Jose, which was the, the place for that stuff. And oh, really, really, yeah. And the, do you did you ever go to Weird Things? No, they just closed the Weird yeah. Things uh, warehouse in San Jose. Somebody just bought it. Um, and I think I missed, or I'm sorry, Weird Stuff, pardon me. Weird Stuff Warehouse was purchased by the Outback Equipment Company, and they sold all their assets, and it's gone. Since all the not, weird stuff? Yeah, it was just like, I mean, it was components. It was it was the best stuff ever. You could still buy, like, components and such at Fry's, though, right? Not really. Not like that. Not really. It's not what it was. Yeah. Okay. And there's a place still a in Palo Alto that you can go uh, on Fourth Street, where you can go in and you can buy one a resistor or a diode. Uh, right. Okay. But Halted, I I don't I don't I think Halted went away went out of business too, which was I won the uh, seventh grade uh, eighth grade uh, science fair making electronic bongos. <laughs> we still have uh, okay. I, I, Stacy's embarrassed for me. This, Stacy, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> this is up the road a piece from us in Rona Park. Geeky, geeky. HSC Electronics Supply. Probably yeah. you don't need a current sensor split core 10 millimeter 20 amp. <laughs> but if you, you did. Buy, you can buy that on SparkFun and places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And either in digi, that, digi key, digi that, whatever. That's, that's who's taken over for this is Adafruit and SparkFun and places like that. Uh, but yeah, my, nice. my dad, my dad used <sighs> to have all this stuff lying around in. See, you came by this honestly. Rubbish. Yeah. Was your dad a I hobbyist did. or was he? Uh, did he's this, a, uh, no, he's, he's an engineer. It, okay. Double E. Um, double e, My okay. mom was a geophysicist, so science really? and math. My dad yeah. was a paleontologist. Oh, see, really? Yeah, a professor thereof, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yes, a professor thereof. That's right. Uh, and my mom was an ecodesiologist. What's that? A what? <laughs> um, Grasshopper. Oh. Grasshopper, a learn to code app from Google's area. Now we're talking software. I know. I was, I was excited by this because it felt like Duolingo for coding. Yeah. It's JavaScript, right? Yep. Uh, so actually, if you go to grasshopper.code, let me do that. Grasshopper.code, you can see it directly. Learn to code for free. I guess it's a it's an app. It's an app. I'm installing it right now, yeah. you guys. Welcome to Grasshopper, the coding app for beginners. Best way to start your coding adventure with fun, quick games in your phone. This is Google's response to Swift Playgrounds. Teach you to write real JavaScript, move, move through progressively challenging levels as you develop your abilities, then graduate with fundamental programming skills for your next step as a coder. No, oh, it's so cute. This is really neat. 
Area one accredited to Area one twenty. Yeah, that's a Google. Uh, what is it? Incubator yeah. or what? I think isn't that kind of their secret place? It's their secret uh, place. I think it's their like people who have cool ideas and let's build crazy new stuff. It's their crazy new stuff thing. Does Google still do the twenty percent time thing? Yeah, but the I old don't jokes, know if they it's one hundred twenty percent. Oh my <laughs> god, there are tests in this, you guys. Of course, there's tests. By the way, I'm still waiting to receive my final grade, but I did complete my uh, my online class in coding, which I would okay, actually he's... highly recommend. Which language? Uh, it's a big, it's a student language specifically designed for teaching good coding habits, and they don't tell you, but it's really it's really uh, based on list. So I just had some folks in from um, Google um, AMP talking to a bunch of product and audience people here at CUNY. It's what I'm, I'm here all day. Oh. And the argument was made at the end of the day that we should be teaching students to write AMP. That's a way to make them make <sighs> no. content. How no. self-serving is that? That is No, awful. I think it was actually somebody like... else in the room. Oh. Well, Don't tell do that. Them, tell them no. <laughs> Although, is Google bringing with the new email? I don't know if we want to talk about this yet, but the Gmail update, is that... I read something about bringing the AMP to Gmail. Is yes, oh. I heard more about that today. Yeah, and it's it's really basically you can't do JavaScript and that kind of stuff in Gmail. And it's a way to make Gmail responsive. I mean, email and Gmail responsive and updated. Has Have any of you gotten that yet? No, but I got uh, my inbox has a new feature called highlights. Highlights. Highlights for children? You have new highlights. Oh. What are highlights? Are they Inbox good highlights important new emails so you can read them first. How they decide huh. what's important, whom hmm. you email, is this your how personal often you email or your... them. It's my personal. Well, it's my it's my oh. app. Uh, it's my it's my. G -spot. Oh, it's your apps account. Okay, yeah, because I'm like, is it your regular Gmail or your apps? It looks at which emails are you open, which you reply to, keywords that are in emails you have already oh, read. So it's learning from what you use, what you right. do. That's neat. How is how is that different than the? Priority you know how inbox. they did the pri priority? Yes, thank you. That. Yeah, I don't know because basically, well, because I use Inbox, and it separates out updates from low priority, from social, and all that, and then everything else that's left over is supposed to be important. But now there's important, important. But someone just wrote a story about, uh, I think it was kill, Google killing Inbox. What? Yeah. So <gasps> that would be uh, bad. That would be so bad. Maybe it was a Reddit. So this is a Reddit post, but then I, I swear somebody just did a story, but maybe it was based on this thread. Uh, Reddit is Google stopping uh, development. It asks, is Google inbox stopping development submitted one year ago? Yeah. Well, well, well here's the, here's the article. What, what uh, that's from Android, Android central. central. Yeah. I don't know how we, yeah. So it, it, so it, it sure looks like, yeah, yeah, no, that's link bait. I hope. Oh, too. I I'm now I addicted to it. it. I, I was on this very show. I know you hated it. I was frightened to death. It scared me. And you've changed your your tune. I live lovey to Google. Uh, well, so this new Gmail, I guess, is something like that on steroids, maybe. Well, uh, I thought it was just a DUI. I didn't realize there were going to be new features. Well, it's funny. I tried to go to Gmail, and it took me to Inbox. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. It heard you talking. Uh, no, I, but there's still there's a link on inbox to Gmail. Still the same. Boy, it looks so old fashioned to me now. I know. <laughs> so you use I inbox? Love my Gmail. I don't use inbox. I tried to use it for a while, and it just didn't work. Yeah, you for got my you workflow. got even more freak than I was, as I remember. You just you were like, yeah. You know what? I stopped I, using Gmail entirely. Oh, jeez. What, geez, what you are you just, using? You just you're just so contrarian. Are you? Or what are you? Let me get, let me guess, Leo. You're using you Pine. Don't. No, no, Pine is a client. I do use Pine, but that's not. <laughs> Pine is a client. That's not the server. I use oh. Fastmail, which is a nice IMAP paid IMAP service. Uh, and I actually, I like it. I can't show because it it's got all my email. But I, I actually like it a little bit better than uh, Gmail. Part of it, really, it's not Gmail's fault. Part of the reason I stopped. I, a couple of reasons I stopped using it. One is it's not true IMAP, but the other is because my email address at Gmail which was simply Laporte at gmail.com, turns out to be so generically French that I was getting huge amounts of French oh. spam. In fact, I still, 
in the middle of the night, every night, I get some fake French account on my hangout saying, cuckoo, <laughs> comment ça va? Because <laughs> they think I'm French. And then I think there were a lot of Laportes, like people would write, you know, Antoinette space Laporte at gmail.com. So I was getting people's confirmations and tickets and also. Well, how does Fastmail get rid of all that? I don't get because it's not Laporte at Gmail. I use. My oh, oh I, right. Of course. Uh -huh. I'm, not, right. I'm not Laporte at Gmail anymore. So what I should now, probably you will never do is. guess this darn address at Fastmail.com. Yeah. No, exactly. I don't use a real address. But, uh, but I do use Leo at Leoville, which has been my address for 15 years. But that just forwards to whatever. So it used to forward to Google, Gmail. At, for the spam filtering and then go from Gmail to Fastmail. And then I realized I don't, I eliminated the Gmail and actually spam went down because Gmail was generating more spam than it was filtering. Which is kind of, a, hey. kind of annoying. Um, do you want to see my uh, final student project? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a space invaders. It's not, it doesn't have any sound. I'm just shooting uh, bad guys as they come down from the sky. But you would think this was uh, trivial, but it was 889. Oh, no. Don't let him land, Leo. Oh, I lost. So that's it. I hope I get an A. <laughs> it's actually really fun. I'm really enjoying I like coding. But I'm going to download this grasshopper. I pro I pro I've programmed for years. This is kind of me. Uh, it's kind of it's like when a native Chinese speaker takes Chinese. It's just not really fair. <laughs> By the way, that happened to me in college, and it was really annoying. I, I believe you, Lee. Yeah, they come in there. They're, just, they're r r rattling off Chinese, and I'm going, Ni how? It is a difficult that's, language. That's how I feel when I go to Germany and, and see a, see a three-year-old. Uh, but you speak German pretty well, don't you? No, I don't. No. You just give the impression. You could say like so and so schrecht fast. Leistungsschutzrecht. Why? Why? Why does Google Google Maps now give directions based on fast food locations? <laughs> okay, that's awesome. I think it's I think it's any I think it's a lot of different kind of locations, but that's the Grubhub local angle to this. So this woman tweets, so Google Maps instructed me to turn right after Burger King. Hashtag mind blown. <laughs> then Scott tweets, Google Maps told me to make a right right after White Castle. This really happened in the Bronx. Elizabeth writes, Google Maps told us to turn left at Taco Bell. We were so confused. No, no, you drive into Taco Bell. <laughs> By the way, have you had the naked egg breakfast taco? What? No. <laughs> no, Taco Bell does not provide good breakfast tacos, Jeff. No, it's show. really good. Because you know what it no, is? No, they don't even provide that in Austin the because they know we would. The fried egg is the taco shell. Oh, how do you hold You got to look this up. You got to look this up. This is. <laughs> what? what? Oh, Taco Bell. <laughs> it is the greatest. Now, you can get it dressed, which is to say that it has like a. It's not naked anymore. Around it. But how but do you eat a, that? Doesn't that get all over your hands? It comes hands? in a little holder. It comes in, no, it comes in a little holder. Wait, but there, i got to look. I'm looking. Yeah, up. says Karsten. Yeah. Oh. You know, by the way, stop, uh, Karsten, because this bugs the hell out of me. Every time I go to a site now, Chrome says, has that allow block. Do you want Taco yeah. Bell to send you notifications? Can we oh, there's a way to stop that. I yes. don't want that. How do I stop that? Stop notifications on Because I, I don't want Taco Bell sending me gosh darn notifications. Ooh, you can get uh, nacho cheese sauce on. Look at this. Look at this. Taco. Build your own. Customize it now. Would you like bacon, cheese, nacho cheese sauce? <laughs> Extra nacho cheese sauce? Pico de gallo? Oh, that's a popular upgrade. Guacamole? Yum. Creamy jalapeno sauce? And then you can get, uh, there's an add-on. You can put egg in the egg. Like some egg on my I egg. I like egg on my egg. A side of eggs. I like a little steak, and oh, God knows why. Reduced fat, sour cream. Why? Why start reducing fat now? Right. It's I, you know what? <laughs> so I was you in can California. Get the extra nacho cheese sauce. <laughs> I had a meeting. I was late. I had to drive on the on El Camino. I had to have breakfast, and I thought, well, you know, they have this. Let me go in and just try it, so I can talk about it in the show. 
and it's actually good. Is it really an egg or is it an egg product? That's my question. No, it's, it's a, look at that. It's got a yolk on it. It's an egg. That's a suspiciously that, that could just be symmetric yolk. Yeah, that's, <laughs> huh. that's, by the way, you, you know that, right? That a lot of places don't use real eggs in their eggs. Mm -hmm. You know, they have an egg product they pour out of a little carton. Egg yeah. eaters. Well, but it's no, I don't know. But I mean, fast food I, eggs are often not from a f actual egg. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this is actually pretty good. Stacy's so disgusted. All right, we can go. We can go back to Google. How Maps did they now. get? Well, how did they get to 310 calories? Oh, for, fast! Really, very well, fast. No, because a single egg has 78 calories. Okay. Yeah, well, look at those see. home fries the and cheese. Ingredients are bacon. <laughs> Oh, this, Salt, I thought sugar, this was the naked. I thought it was only cheese. the eggs. The egg's only okay, naked never. on the outside. On the inside, the egg is Nacho the cheese egg is sauce. Full of, full of okay, yeah. Then never mind. I got you. <laughs> I think you're right. The naked egg taco shell is made of cage free egg whites, cage free egg yolks, soybean oil, water, food starch, salt, black pepper, natural butter flavor. Okay, get ready for this. Gum. At Starbucks. The the egg in their bacon gouda and egg breakfast sandwich is a frittata egg panne, patty that contains soybean oil and water, unmodified cornstarch, xanthan gum, citric acid, and powdered cellulose. Burger yeah, King's yeah. breakfast menu describes their eggs as liquid egg pasteurized mixture made with mm. eggs, water, xanthan gum, citric acid, medium chain triglycerides, and more. Well, I guess mm. that is pasteurized. Yeah. This is actually propaganda from Panera, which wants you to know that they put actual eggs on their eggs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to eat breakfast at home. This is from the, the Today pancakes. Show. This is an article from the Today Show that is really a press release from Panera Bread. Boy, is it. That's kind of shocking. All right, so anyway, so so Google will tell you to turn left at the Taco Bell. After you drive into the Taco Bell, then it'll give you this. Did, did you see the ad for Taco Bell? No. Will okay. it? That is that oh, is not know. what's happening. Jeff is. You know what Jeff I is, want? You know what I want, though? I want to say I'm going Jeff, from here. Jeff, that's moral Boston. panic. I was going to say, say that's, <laughs> that's ad panic, marketing panic. Ad panic. I want to say find me the nearest Starbucks on the way. I've wanted that feature for ages. Well, well the next exit is 10 miles off the exit, but the exit after that, it's only two miles off the exit. I wanted to give me choices. It doesn't do that. Just don't go to the Starbucks, uh, what is it, May 9th, when they're all closing to for uh, as to, to well learn as not, how not to be prejudiced? Okay, wait, wait. I want to talk about this Google thing because it's actually useful. Okay. But then we can talk about Starbucks. I'm going to, I'm gonna while you're doing that, I'm going to find the video that a viewer sent us of, of you punching me. Oh, yes. Um, okay. But what ah. Google's doing is they're, this is basically to make your directions sound more like people actually give directions, which is like turn left at the Burger King or the bank. And I just think that's useful because I can never tell my right from my left. So, and I'm really bad with landmarks. So I'm very excited. Nice. That's all. That is all. I think this is nice. And yes, they could, they could do a hella job marketing things, but. So the data the that they have there. Well, they have all that data from Google they Maps. Have all that data. They mean, have street maps. Yeah. You know, so I have the weirdest thing with Google Maps. It puts my house four houses back on the road and doesn't recognize where my house is. Is that like, does Sorry it show you in your house <laughs> at the wrong place? No, it says like when you're in your house, does it four put houses your... early? It says welcome. Well, home four here's houses the problem early. I have. I try to set it up so that, so that that's a trusted location. It won't do mm -hmm. it. It doesn't recognize that part of the earth. I'm in a black hole. I don't exist. You need to do your, what are those codes? The six digit, eight digit QY pizza Zen oven 16P. What are those three codes words. called? <laughs> what the hell are you? Oh, what three, the three words? words yeah. yeah. Can you, does that work for you? I don't know. You should try it. Because that's a real problem, Jeff. I'm sorry. Did you do that. It is a real problem. Can you I do mean, it in Google yeah. Maps? Uh, yes, you can. But what is it? Someone help me out here. I'm just going to start gibberish. You can't do. You can't. You have to do it from what three words, and then it sends you to Google Maps with a GPS coordinate. But no, Google created one. Oh, Google has their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's right. like really obscure. It's like weird. It's like yeah, we played with it on the show. Yes. Yeah, mm. Okay. 
that's I was trying to help you out, Jeff. But you can correct Google fixed. Maps, can't you? You can. I think there's no. a way. I don't no. know how in that case to say you say I don't exist, but here's where I exist. Yeah. Because my Google Maps has next plus door to dot me. They codes. That's Google stuff. Plus dot codes. Plus, plus dot codes. codes. Yeah. Okay. My Google Maps. My next door neighbor. My old next door neighbor ran a business called Party Boats Austin, and. <laughs> It's, it wasn't that duck thing where it goes on land and then goes no, on the water. No, it's, it's not. I love duck tours. Don't don't knock my duck okay. tours. I've right. got a quacker, and I'll use it. I know. I remember you uh, used it on me. They, um, <laughs> I can't come. I can't say that those guys have moved and they have not changed their address. So every time I come home, it's like Google is asking me to tell me my experience at party. How boats was party Austin. boats? I know oh, which we have drives a, me bad. Me too. We have a, a, a business near us, and it's always asking and saying, "Are are I, you I, at?" Are you, we're near the outlet malls. It says, are you near the outlet mall? Are you at the outlet malls? Tell me about you it. You drive by a McDonald's and it says, this is a good opportunity to take a photo. No, uh. it's not. <laughs> they all look the same. They don't have the hand egg sandwich. Yeah. All right. Naked, the naked, the naked breakfast egg. taco. Okay. Naked egg. Mike Boas, who watches the show. Hi, Mike. Mad Dog Movies made us this. This is the closest thing so far Stacy has to the Punish Leo <laughs> button. <laughs> I bet that was satisfying, wasn't it? Thank you, man. Uh, now movies. you, you got to switch our. Well, that means you got to switch our monitors. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Was that satisfying? <laughs> To be fair, the, the punch I was envisioning wouldn't have knocked you out of your chair, but since it's an animated you, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, I don't man. mind. Take it. Uh, he even got he got the chair right, everything right. Yeah, good, good work, buddy. Everything Very good. Me right. It's really good. Very nice. Nicely job. Nicely done. So at least, you know what this is? This is a, a spec for the actual Punch Leo button. The actual Punch Leo. <laughs> Consider it a, uh, yeah. What do they, what do they See, call that when they make an animatic of it? It's the animatic oh. for the Punch Leo button. Yeah. Nice. I, I was envisioning something hitting you in the arm. Not your actual. Oh no, head. I was figuring the skull. But Jeff. Oh, okay. Jeff's much I was just more like vicious. Doing a gentle, like, hey. <laughs> I was doing that for you, Stacey. Much, yeah. much, much more vicious. Bit vicious. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mike. And Mad dog. Yeah, movies. Mike. Good work. Really good, good work. work. Really nicely nice. done. Yes. Google is drafting ethical guidelines for working with government. Is that an oxymoron? <laughs> well, it depends on the Google government. Google and ethics or government? <laughs> you, you take your pick. Google. Moral uh, panic. Moral panic. <laughs> Diane Green, who's cloud boss, according to CNBC, I don't know, cloud boss, Diana Green, is said to have expressed regret that those principles were not in place before Google signed its contract. This is that contract that the employee Drunk. petition was complaining about with the DOD uh, and said that these new ethical principles will be in place before it commits to any similar work. Nice. Um, now, I don't see what the principles are, so. Well, she's writing them. Oh, she's writing them. They're in progress. Yeah. So when, when the principles emerge from Diane's pen, we will talk about them, <laughs> whatever they may be. What would you, you know, do no evil is not quite enough these days, I'm afraid. Well, I would say, what? What? So let's talk about this. So, so the the company shouldn't use this technology to kill people. Well, they said, and that their policy was only to help with defensive, not offensive weapons. And I think how that, are that's their defensive good. drones? Uh, they could shoot down missiles. Yeah, Star Wars. All right, well, that's fair. That's fair. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying the to. The problem think more. is that you create that, and there is an offensive potential for it. Yes, everything has both offensive and defensive potentials. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, including wasn't the, information. The, the, the case they were complaining about wasn't that uh, photo recognition, which was seem to be, be targeting. Right. Well, you could argue that you could deploy something at the borders to keep people you know are bad out. Mm. That would be somewhat defensive. Mm -hmm. um, now, anybody who but actually believes that it is might just be ridiculously unethical. Dumb. Right. Unless it's a giant red boxing glove on a spring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, so not, not so, funny, Leo. Not funny. 
I mean, this is the, actually, this is the flip side that you always argue, like think about data collection. Jeff, right. you talk about this a lot. There are so many good uses of data collection. So you could create principles around that. So maybe you collect satellite data for like, that could be used for nuclear disarmament or something, but you wouldn't do it for targeting people. I don't know. So scoop here, Karen McDougal. Mm-hmm. Playboy Playmate is now released from her contract with American Media Inc. and ooh, is able ooh. to talk about her ooh. Donald Trump. This is the one that the National Enquirer, which is AMI, yes. American Media Inc., paid yes. 180000 something. She is now A released. lot of money uh, for the exclusive rights to the story, which they never published, which has the, I think, quite poetic name of Catch and... What is it? Buy and Catch? Catch and Hold? Pay and catch, catch and release, something like that. Something like that. Catch and release is something. That's but. fishing, but this is not fishing. Well, it's uh, also a immigration thing, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Catch and release, yeah. That's. I don't think that's the official term for it, but I think that some call it that. So I'm just sorry. That was a little bit of breaking news from Twitter there. Mm. Speaking of maps, <laughs> apparently people are complaining that Waze is routing them up very steep hills. No. The people who live on that very steep hill steep and hill. the city of Los Angeles are complaining, not the ah, people getting routed that People way. don't mind driving up the hill. It's just that the people who live on the hill. Well, so they have actually a, quite a legitimate complaint. At first, I'm like, ah, shut up and stop your whining. But I read the story. <laughs> and 32% grade. Is that pretty steep? Yeah. It's crazy What's Lombard steep? Street in uh, San Francisco? So uh, the residents uh, of Baxter Street a 32% grade that goes back to the 19th century, are upset that... Uh, 27%. Numerous applications seem to route people up this street, and they're worried about auto accidents. They, these people have actually had accidents, like somebody, like somebody had two cars in their front lawn, and I mean, those are actually like, if this happened in a city your city would actually install speed humps or something to mitigate. Well, that's mitigate. Google's response. Google's response is, we'll do it if the city restricts it. But yeah, until so, the city does something, we're not going to do it. I think they're they're right. So Filbert Street in San Francisco has a 31% oh, grade. that's a very... Okay, it's steeper than Where Filbert. Where in 1996, uh, David Letterman released uh, tons of um, watermelons. <laughs> Here, here's I a picture the, uh, of one of those super stretches trying to go down <laughs> Baxter Street and bottoming out. So there's there's yeah. problem number one. Um, it is fairly steep. This is from 1937. That's, That's fairly steep. In fact, it was in the Little Rascals. Here's something else Stacy won't remember. Nope. Uh, 1930s uh, Little Rascals. Uh, We're not old enough to remember either, Stacy. They had a derby uh, race down uh, that street. In the 50s, automobile manufacturers sent new models up the slopes of Baxter Street to show how powerful their new engines were. Uh, more recently, Baxter set the stage for legendary skateboarder Don Noogie Nguyen Yen, Wen's incredible run, which went viral last year. You want to watch his, his bomb hill drop? Uh, if you have vertigo... Uh, you might not want to watch this. This is from Thrasher Magazine. I do. You know me, Bridges. Noogie's Hill First off, you should never, ever challenge Nooge at any point. Nooge, sorry. Sorry, Nooge. Don't do it. So that's back to the street. It doesn't look that steep. I could do no. that. But in fact, that was the only way when I was a kid I could skateboard. Is if I could, we had a, a hill that steep, and I would. that's the only way I could get enough speed up to stand up. I had no desire or even want. That's to Nuge. Even thought of even trying to bomb that hill. But He's going to bomb it, man. Called me out in front of Burnett. Okay, boy, like, they hey. really build up the <laughs> tension. <laughs> oh, look, oh, here's geez. some pictures of a school bus bottomed out. When we first pulled up, we pulled up at the top. And we're like, back oh, back hill, he says. Crazy. Oh, oh he's bombing it. Oh, he's bombing it. Oh, he's crazy. Oh, Nuge, you're crazy. I wanted to try it out, you know, just to check oh, the crack. please. <laughs> that was a manufactured danger. You're the little rascal. I sent you, guy. so that's nothing compared to San Francisco. Broderick. Broderick. Broadway and Vallejo. Yes, I know Broderick very 38%. well. 38%. Here's Nuge uh, when he was younger <laughs> going down the street. This is the little rascal, Stacy. You see what you've been missing? Yes. 
Now, this is filmmaking at its finest. It sure is. Great special effects. <laughs> and the acting. Oh, 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 there's Buckwheat. Ain't got no breaks. Wow. Okay. That was fun. Anyway, uh, Baxter Street, people don't drive up it. If you get, if Waze tells you to go up there, don't turn do it. around. Don't do it. I drove a, I'm such an idiot. I had a stick shift car in San Francisco. Oh, oh man. Yeah, that is, don't you, do that. You know, that what's, you know what's great up the hills of San Francisco? A Tesla. Really? Right. It's easy peasy. Because, yeah. Stacy, you know this. If you press the brake a little hard, it puts it on the emergency brake. It just locks, and then you can take your mm -hmm. feet off the pedals and sit there. And then, because there's so much torque in it, when you're going, and you could be like this, and you just put the accelerator down, and you just go up. Yes, that's how I slammed through a fence, thanks to my <laughs> pedal error. So oh, much no. torque. <laughs> really? When did this happen? Recently? Oh no! This happened like a year and a half ago. This is why I all. This is why I say all the Teslas. You see them all like going through windows and stuff, and it's because <laughs> when you mess up, you really in a mess Tesla, up. You really mess, you mess up, up yeah. big time. You got a, you got a lot of torque. It's hard and fast. Yeah, <laughs> you're going you're going fast when you when you mess up. So is Tesla in trouble or not? Uh, no, God, they're that, such idiots. No, oh, there's good news. They just announced. That they're going to go to 24-hour production for the Model 3, and they're going to be able to do, what is it, 6,000 a week. Oh, I was talking about the NTS and National Oh, this NTS whole thing over the self-driving yeah. car. Yeah, I'm like, God, Tesla. They're kind Damn. of in a, a, you don't get in a shooting war with government agencies. You're not especially, going to win. Especially after you've had multiple accidents. It doesn't where look, people have, the optics yeah. aren't good. <laughs> And I and I really I agree. They should not call it uh, an autopilot. It really uh, and it shouldn't no, be yeah. treated should as an autopilot. It should be no. treated as kind of fancy cruise control with lane change capabilities or something like that. That that doesn't sell as well. That doesn't fit on the little dash. No, but, buttons. but 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 when you buy a Tesla, you understand that there's some hyperbole involved. They call the air filtration system the biohazard. Biohazard. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a big biohazard logo on it. It's, it it's part it, of the it's fun nuts. of being a test. And it's called insane mode and ludicrous mode. You should understand there's a little bit of hyperbole going on with the marketing. That That's doesn't work so well with lawyers. Well, and it doesn't work well with everybody. I mean, you yeah. tell somebody that they can keep their hands off the wheel. They're going to keep, I mean, driving for many people is very boring. Here is, and, uh, here is David Letterman. Rolling, oh, here's <laughs> rolling. What was these ping pong balls down Broadway? No, this is melons, I think. Melons, I don't know. Oh, uh, various things, I various think. things just rolling them down. That's the steep. Who cleaned that up? Oh man, well, they have it. That's what interns are for. Looks like they put a wall at the bottom. Oh, they put a wall down there, okay. Totally. I think he did, I think he did other here's things. The yeah, there you go. Melons, here's me. <laughs> no, that's fun. <laughs> That's uh, actually fun. that was TV. Can, yeah, those were the days when TV was great. Do you remember this, Stacy? Do you ever have you ever heard of David Letterman? Yeah, he has a, a Netflix show. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul McCartney used to be with a group called the Beatles. I know. Wings. That's right. All right. <laughs> I'm, you know, if you're gonna make fun of us being old, I'm making fun of you being young. It doesn't have the same exact. I'm not. I just turned 40. Wow. 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 Yes, Happy birthday. Did you have a good birthday? We saw the balloons. Oh, I <gasps> yes. I got, okay. This is super nerdy, but I went to a restaurant called Uchiko for my, it's in Austin. It's delicious. Um, so we went and do you know what uni is? Yeah. Love uni. I love it. Me too. I love it. It's one of my so, favorite. It's expensive, but it's my birthday, so I like, I'm going to treat myself. I got a piece, and then I was going to finish my meal with another piece. And instead, they brought out a flight of uni. So they brought out a Santa Barbara uni, one from the Hokkaido uni from Japan, and then one that also had, like, salmon roe. So it was so awesome. Uni is the a, ugliest sushi, on it? but maybe it's... It is ugly, and if you know what it is, it's also doubly disgusting. It, is it related it's, to snails? It is uh, sea urchin gonads. Yeah, I'm, I've never been fond of Oni. I love it. I love it too. It's so uh, delicious. Okay. It looks like yeah, baby. I, poop. I really wish I didn't know much about it. I'll have some Oni <laughs> for you when I'm in Japan. Oh, there you go. You know what's funny is I'm the only one in the family who likes sushi, so I'm gonna I'm uh -huh. gonna have to trick them into going to some sushi spots.
Oh, well, a lot of the Japanese places, they'll have other things. That yeah, are maybe. Yeah, they, they, you know, Michael loves ramen, so he'll be able to eat. Um, Lisa loves tempura. She'll be able to eat. It'll be fine. Uh, Android P. We were talking a lot about this on All About Android earlier this week. Looks like Android might be copying iPhone 10 with the gestures. And you know what? I'm happy if they do, because the gestures in the iPhone 10 are actually the best thing about iPhone 10. It is a very natural way of moving around. New navigation bar similar to the iPhone 10 with a swipe up gesture to reveal the multitasking UI instead of the recents button. Um, so we get the, how can they get rid of the recents? You swipe up instead. Oh, I see. So. It's very natural. Now, I hope they have the best thing about the iPhone, the absolute best thing, is instead of even worrying about recents, you just swipe along the bottom to go to the previous app. Just like that. It's very natural. See how natural that is? You just swipe. But I want to see, because sometimes I get up with 20 apps running, I just want to see what they are. Well, you could still do, do that. 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 That would be the theory is you, you would be able to do that. I don't know. Well, if the, how do I how do I get to all of the apps? Well, then? Google's presentation may may look different than this. Yeah, right. But, but, how but do the you get idea is you get to all the apps by on the iPhone by swiping up. You see a little bit, and that, so that's what they're thinking. That, that this is all from pre-release Android P stuff. We know we're going to find out. Google yeah. I/O is three weeks away. Exactly. Three weeks away. Hard to believe. <laughs> three <laughs> weeks gonna... away. Uh, I will oh. be. I will have just come back from vacation. Uh, we will be doing. Uh, I think we're. I, you've been contacted. I hope. Are we moving Twig? I think we are. Oh, I didn't know this because I'm going. I'll be. At I didn't I. know oh. this either. Well, okay. So the problem is that Microsoft Build is the same time. So, I'm at Build physically. Really? Yeah. So I'll be at Build on Monday and yeah. Tuesday. So Monday we're doing. Um, uh, the build keynote Monday morning, and then in the afternoon we're doing Windows Weekly. Normally, right before this show on Wednesdays. Right. Uh, Tuesday is Google I/O's keynote, so we'll be doing right. that. Moving, I'll be there. Which means we'll move iOS Today and MacBreak Weekly to Wednesday in the traditional Windows Weekly slot. But I guess this won't affect Twig, will it? So we'll do Twig on Tuesday. Twig will be on Tuesday. I'm being told. It's so funny. Usually when you say I'm being told you, you're listening in your ear. In order right. for me to be told anything, I have to take my ears out. Yeah. <laughs> what? What'd you say? Because I have these ceiling ears. It will be Tuesday afternoon. Oh, see, now it's in my ear. Tuesday afternoon. So, Tuesday uh, maybe, so, so why are we doing the, that? Because uh, we could do it on uh, its normal time, couldn't we? Uh, we could. Well, yeah. you want to be close Which would to you the, guys uh, prefer? Oh, keynote? we want to be closer to the keynote. We'll be closer to the keynote. I'm going to be on a plane on Wednesday when y'all are recording. How about Tuesday? Will you be in your Tuesday. hotel room waiting for us to call? Um, it depends. I, I don't have my full build schedule built we out yet. We don't need to do this on the air. We can do, we can do this after yeah. the show. Yes, that's Sorry. true. We can. Yeah. I'm sure the audience is quite fascinated. Well, well I do want to be able to tell them when the show. Are. I do want to be able to tell them when the show will be. But we will we'll let yeah. you know that. Who's filling in for me next week and the week after, Mr. Karsten Bondi, producer? We will have uh, Jason Howell hosting. Okay. Yay! From All About Android, Jason will be hosting the show in the next couple of weeks. and then hopefully, Try to get Jason to do dangerous things. Hopefully next week we'll have uh, Joan Donovan in the place. Of yes, I will not be here. We've been trying to get Joan because she is an expert on how memes are used to shape political opinion. She works Indeed at Dana Boyd's uh, uh, think tank. Data and Society. Data and Society, her think tank. And really, we love her. She's great. Yeah, hey, I'm sorry you won't be here because I know you. What are you? I was Johnny. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's really boring. You look like you were upset. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> no. I don't I mind just... yawning. I yawn all the time. You can yawn. You don't have to cover your mouth. Yeah, I'm jump like. Yes, I'm yes you do. So is... Google has. I mean, Tesla has now been so uh, inflammatory to the uh, NTSB that they've been banned <laughs> from the crash probe. And then. Yeah. After that, well, so, so I, this, the sequence of stories is crazy. Like, they they were dueling with one another. Tesla, I think Tesla's being a little unfair to the guy who got killed in the crash, saying things like, well, he didn't have his hands on the wheel for six seconds. You tell me, Stacy. my experience with autopilot is it doesn't have any magic sensors in the wheel that knows when your hand's on there. You actually have to jerk the wheel a little bit. So I can have my hands on the wheel the whole time, and it says, put your hands on the wheel. So I actually have to go, uh just to let it know. Is is that your experience or does it know your hands are on the wheel if you're just lightly resting there? Uh, my Tesla is so old it does not have autopilot. Oh, you don't know. 
So I think I, this is a little unfair, and certainly Tesla knows this. Um, the guy could easily have had his hands on the wheel. Now, the question is why he didn't notice that the Tesla was veering into the guardrail as it had done before, and he observed well, so, before. Like, I've driven other people's cars with autopilot, and at some point you're like, well, I'm going to decide to trust this because it's mm -hmm. worked in the Big past. Big mistake. So I could see how you could be like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, I, I think it's really unseemly of Tesla to put out public press releases saying, well, he didn't have his hands on the wheel. He wasn't paying attention. That is not nice. I'm like, imagine yep. if that were your dad. Yeah. I, you and I think this is why NTSB says, look, you know what? Uh, really, it said the quote from the NTSB, releases of incomplete information often lead to speculation and incorrect assumptions about the probable cause of a class of a crash. And that is why we're revoking Tesla's status as a party in the probe. They too many public releases, and I think that's completely appropriate. Tesla's going to <laughs> is now going to file a complaint with Congress, contending that it's in its own statement the NTSB is quote more concerned with press headlines than actually promoting safety. And I actually think going after the NTSB is kind of a jerk, is kind of an odd move because out of all of our public agencies, they're actually pretty. They're not hated by anybody. Well, you know, and, they and as as this article in, from NBC points out, Tesla has really been blaming the driver. Yeah. So, and, come on. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we will uh, watch with interest. I mean, I, I, look, as somebody who uses autopilot a lot, I've had the experience of the car pulling into obstacles, pulling, pulling into, in particular, construction, uh, road division, if it can't see the lanes, and you grab the, you know, you're holding the wheel and you grab, pull it the other way. You say, nope, and you disengage. And I have disengaged my autopilot and my Tesla numerous what does times. What does your family think of you using autopilot? Lisa refuses to use it and she doesn't like it when I use it. But mm -hmm. now, but I will say, I believe it's safer because uh, I, I think that momentary inattention is less likely to cause a crash. And that that can be a problem as you as you're a driver, especially on long distances. I love on highways. I turn it on. I pay attention, keep my hands on the wheel. But it's just one more way I'm avoiding running to the guy ahead of me because because it won't do that. Uh, staying in the lane, even you know if my attention wanders or whatever, uh, it's just help. You shouldn't rely on it, but it's but it's a very helpful tool, and I think it makes me a safer driver. I feel more safe behind the wheel. But that's because I also pay attention. You can't you can't. You can't let you can't say, oh, the car's driving. I'm I'm going to read a book. You can't do that. I can, I don't think I could pay attention if I weren't actively driving. I you think can. that would be you, you, fear is a remarkable I don't motivator. Use, uh, cruise control. I hate cruise control. Oh well, you wouldn't like yeah. this. This is just I'm not a huge cruise this control. This is cruise fan control either. on steroids. I use it even in traffic. I love it. But I'll tell you why it's great. It's stop and go traffic. Cruise control on the Tesla and many new model vehicles uh, will stop and go. Mm -hmm. So it maintains a safe stopping distance. It maintains speed. It does. I, I mean, I've never had a problem with it not seeing the car in front of me. So uh, that's a really great way of kind of you don't have to keep your foot on the accelerator going back and forth. Brake, accelerator, brake, accelerator. You could take your feet off the pedals, still paying attention. And it will automatically keep a safe, safe stopping distance and, and speed up and slow down appropriately and, and stop and go traffic. That's, I think, huge. So. I am not against Tesla's stuff. I just don't, I think that they should probably be at greater pains to remind people it isn't autopilot. And, uh, and people should learn if you've got it. Don't, don't, you know, don't let it do the driving. You're still driving. <laughs> Meanwhile, Waymo has requested and received permission. <laughs> this is not a timely announcement from the California <laughs> Department of Motor Vehicles to take the safety driver out of their cars and drive fully autonomously uh, at starting on the streets of Mountain View, where Google is. I thought they already were doing that. I guess they, they had still a safety driver. They still now, have a safety driver. Now those Chrysler minivans will be powering around town with nobody. Are they still driving those little funny look, looking little things? No, no, things? these are minivans. These are Chryslers. Oh. But if you're a pedestrian in Mountain View, just word of warning, you might really want to look both ways carefully. Yep. Cause, Before cause, jaywalking? Well, here's my here's my concern. They talked. Waymo was, you know, said immediately. Oh, you see, Uber, they have a disengage. What was it? Every 13 miles, 
We only have a disengage once every 5,600 miles. A disengage means the safety driver took over. But once every 5,600 miles means in this car without a safety driver, once every 5,600 miles, it's going to do something bad. That's not good. Uh, or the human being was wrong and shouldn't have disengaged. Oh, maybe maybe that's their position is, oh, no, that was a mistaken disengagement. <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? I mean, I don't, I, nobody denies it. Cars drive better than humans already. But there are plenty of situations these self-driving vehicles are not ready for that the human has to take over. And I worry that in Mountain View, these cars will be plowing through those situations. Are they? Do, are there limitations on when you can't, like, during rainy or weird weather? I'm sure they, there are, yeah. Let me like, look. in certain hours you can operate yeah. without a safety driver? I don't know. I mean, we have to we have to get there if we want to actually create autonomous cars. Of course so we, we do, have but to we should get this. there when we're ready. We shouldn't we shouldn't push it. Um, only two companies have applied for such permits, Waymo and some other company. According to a source familiar with the matter, this is the San Francisco Chronicle. Waymo plans to start testing near its Mountain View headquarters. Uh, over time, it will expand the testing of autonomous cars with no backup driver. Notice they call it backup, not safety, to more of the Bay Area. Uh, the Waymo's approach will be to extensively map a train by having vehicles with test drivers cover it first before using driverless vehicles. Uh, let me see. We have a lot of confidence, says John Krafchick, CEO of Waymo, that our technology would be robust and would be able to hand situ handle situations like the one in Arizona. See, meanwhile, I want Tammy Jo Schultz to be driving me wherever I go. Yeah, because Tammy Jo needs a job. She's a nice person. No, you know who Tammy Jo is? No. I was like, who is Tammy Jo Schultz? Which? <laughs> Tammy Jo Schultz is the amazing pilot nerve. Oh, yes. Who brought oh, yes. The Southwest lady. The Southwest jet in. First fatality since 2009 in commercial I'm... airline traffic. And it's right before I get on a plane. I'm, I well, should... that makes it statistically even less likely. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. That's right. Oh, I'm safer. <laughs> They got it out of the way. It's Relax. actually a, a tragic story. Uh, the Southwest uh, flight from New York to Dallas uh, had a catastrophic engine failure, and I guess shrapnel from the engine pierced the window of the plane, and a passenger was partially sucked out the window, uh, straight so out of a James Bond movie. Uh, was that the person who died? Yeah. yeah. The other okay. passengers pulled her. There were seven other minor injuries. The other, other passengers pulled her back in. And uh, she survived that, but she died of a heart attack shortly thereafter. And but of course, you're you're praising the pilot, who, who uh, everyone praised. That she, yeah. was, she was she was the Sully the of the Sully of yes. South. Of the That's South. why I, I hope her nickname is Schultzy because it should be Sully Schultzy. and Schultzy. <laughs> Sully and Schultzy. Well, I think partly uh, the attention is because she's a female commercial airline pilot, and not only that, she was um, very early on as a fighter pilot. Yeah. Nice. So uh, you want you want Sally Joe to drive your way. I want Sally Joe. I trust Sally Joe over uh, any darn any just any just technology. Uh, planes panic. mostly are drive by wire. They are. That's true. Yes. Sorry, I'm like. Well, actually, Jeff, <laughs> you're already there. Yeah, <laughs> but they don't leave but it okay. on all the time. Uh, it depends. I mean, they yeah, leave it on. A lot of a lot. Some of them leave it on for landings even now too. It just depends on weather and other circumstances. There are uh, there are rules that you have to do a uh, autonomous landing once every month or so. I think. Uh, so really? so oh. yeah. Sometimes you almost certainly if you fly a lot, Jeff, uh, you have been through an As autonomous I do. landing. And I was told by one captain, yeah, you know how you know you're it's the autonomous landing. It's the perfectly smooth one. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. I, sure. no, I do not mean to besmirch our fine commercial pilots who I have huge respect for. You know, nobody respects doctors anymore, but a commercial airline pilot, Tan Hut. Yep. All right, let's take a little break. And then uh, we can talk about the sex compass. What? <laughs> I'm sure the sponsor will be delighted. That was exactly the response I was looking for. What? Uh, I got to go back to our rundown. Hold what? on. <laughs> what? What the heck? We're talking about WordPress. Not the sex compass. The WordPress.com, which is my blogging host. 
Uh, I love WordPress. I see more and more people using WordPress. I, it, well, literally 30% of the entire web uses WordPress. I've used WordPress practically since Matt Mullenweg had wrote it early in the 2000s. Uh, but for a long time, I was hosting it myself, which was so, I don't know why I was doing this. Because I spent, you know, I was always kind of tweaking it and playing with it and the server, not the content. I never put any content on there. And, and I, I was paying more, frankly, to host my own copy of WordPress than to use WordPress.com. When that light went on and I realized I twigged, if you were, to the fact that I could save money and they'd maintain it. I'd always have the latest version. I'd have all the plugins and I'd have the great support of the WordPress team. I, I, I ran to WordPress.com and created uh, moved my site there, leolaporte.com. Uh, make your site your own because WordPress.com gives you the freedom and the flexibility to share your voice, your work, your way. You don't need to be a coder. You don't need to be a designer. All you need to do is, is have, a, have something to say have a, and want a place on the net. And by the way, this is your place. This isn't Facebook's. This is not Mark Zuckerberg's place. It's not Twitter's place. It's your place. Every business, every human should have their own place on the net. The place people find when they search for your name. You don't want to let somebody else determine what they find. You want to do that. Great customer support 24-7 Monday through Friday and on weekends too. WordPress has great e-commerce now. This is nice, ranging from a simple buy button to a complete online store. And plans start at $4 a month. I was crazy to be doing this. I don't know what I was thinking myself. Actually, I ended up getting the business plan because I get so many fabulous features, including great plugins. It's HTTPS. I get Jetpack. I get uh, the the AMP plugin, so it speeds loading on mobile. Really, if you look at WordPress, you'll realize thirty why 30% 30 of all the websites in the world run on WordPress and why I run on WordPress.com and Steve Gibson does and Paul Therott does and everybody I know. WordPress. Dot com. Get started today with 15% off any new plan purchase. WordPress.com slash twig is the website. WordPress.com slash twig for 15% off your brand new website. At my, I'm really pleased. My daughter, I registered when Abby was born 26 years ago and Henry was born 23 years ago. I registered abbylaporte.com and henrylaporte.com. And I got, I bought, I think I bought the 20 year reg, which was expensive. It's like 200 bucks or something, 20 year registration. Cause I figured if they don't want it by the time they're 20 and they, ne they still, you know, but just the other day, Abby said, okay, I'm ready to set up abbylaport.com. What should I do? I said, wordpress.com. And so stay tuned. And I told, I told her, I think she, she realized this. If you don't create your own website, then when people search for your name, it's whatever other people have posted about you. She said, I want to put like, my, my best work there, my resume, stuff like that. I said, absolutely, Abby. That's what everybody, once you're 16, take control of your online presence by having your own website. You have to, I really believe you have to do that. Do you think you'll, what are you laughing at? Because uh, my friend is a graduation present, gave me my own domain, my stacyhagenbotham.com. That's a great present. And you've never used um, it? No, that's my, I have it. My husband does domains. We have our names, my kids' names. Oh, you names, have them all. <laughs> relations. I mean, you have them all. But don't you agree okay. that you really need to have? Um, you do. And this is Kevin Marks has always been saying this too. If you don't own your own name and website, it's a big mistake. Honestly, you know. Yeah. Unless you're like, like my sister-in-law just got married, and she's now her last name is now Taylor. And so I'm like, yeah, if we're not getting your dummy. Well, buy your future wedded name as well. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the old days, you'd practice your new name and your your notebook writing over and over, Stacy. I can't marry you uh, because the domain isn't available. I don't have the domain. So sorry. I know. Well, you don't have to take his name. Let's be honest. That's very true. I didn't. Oh, I'm so dark now. Can I open my light or... Yeah, I? please do. I was going to talk about sex compass, but maybe this would be a good time for you to get out of here. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, ready. Cambridge Analytica, another web, another whistleblower has stepped forward and said, you know what? That wasn't the only Cambridge Analytica quiz. We had lots of quizzes and apps like sex compass was one of them. Did you ever take the sex compass quiz 
on Facebook while you were feeding information to Cambridge Analytica. Data was collected, says Cambridge Analytica, with a consent and limited to tens of thousands of Facebook users. Facebook says, well, yeah, but accept that because of friends of friends, 87 million accounts. All of the data was exfiltrated to Cambridge Analytica. I want to know which of my friends took the sex compass quiz. That's, <laughs> you can, you that's can what I want to search and find that out. I never got notification that anybody... Did you you get have to go to a page. Well, I thought it was just going to pop up. I thought so, too. Now, I'm not on Facebook anymore, so I can't do this. But you, there's a page. What's the page you go to? Facebook, Cambridge. I have to look it up. Chat room, do you know? Um... Have I been pwned? No. <laughs> yeah, have I been pwned? How to check with Facebook. Go to a new help page um, on the site. Oh, but see, I can't go there. How to tell if my info was shared with Cambridge Analytica. Um, you must log in first. But this is, but see, here's the interesting thing. This is just for that one quiz. This is your digital life. But now we know from the second whistleblower, there were more. So uh, I don't know what this page is, Jeff, but if you search for Cambridge Analytica on Facebook, you should... I find they're still there. No. They were banned. There's a Cambridge Analytica page on Facebook. Oh, Lord. Well, that's just their business page, right? No, but they were blocked. Yeah. Weren't they? Yeah, but they were just banned from using the data. They don't necessarily get banned from a having a presence ad for data-driven campaigns. Let's talk. <gasps> oh, that's Jeez. nervy as hell. No press yes. is bad press. No, uh, yeah, it's probably true. Facebook has, thanks to GDPR. Remember, we were uh, there was some thought that they weren't going to give you all the features that Europe required. But then Mark said in that phone call you were listening to Jeff that they were, and now they have announced uh, new privacy controls worldwide based on GDPR. I know a lot of people are starting to download their Facebook information, which is great. You can. For instance, turn off facial recognition now. I think that's new. You can, uh, you can manage specially protected data in your profile, such as religious and political views. You have a lot more control. Yeah, here's the setting for face recognition. Do not allow Facebook to recognize me in photos or videos. Now... I imagine it's this is where I'm I'm going to have a little disadvantage with not having an account. I can't check, but I would imagine that by default recognition is turned on. You'd have to find it and turn it off. Facebook's also rolling out additional protections for teens. Uh, young people between 13 and 15 in some EU countries need permission from a parent or guardian to enable targeted ads or to add information like interested into their profiles. So Facebook said teenagers in this age bracket will see a less personalized version of Facebook, aw, with limited sharing options until they get parental consent. That's uh, good. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, I think having a conversation with people about like how their data might be used. I mean, we have those conversations with our daughter all the time. You could say, so. really, this is a benefit of GDPR. I have mixed There's feelings so many about benefits. I have mixed feelings about generally about government regulation of of internet but this is one where you could say there really are some we're lucky GDPR exists. Uh we'd be luckier if our own government would implement something uh, like this. Yeah, at least let's see how it goes. Uh there's a new page let's Jeff see. you could look at called access your information on which you can further evaluate the information you've shared and manage it. If you download the blob the 50 megabyte blob there's really no rhyme or reason it's just a bunch of data although i've seen yeah. people already start to write python scripts to parse it things just like that parse it. yeah, yeah. Uh, i that's the one thing i regret about getting rid of my facebook account i would like to see that blob i'd like to know what it knew is it, it is it dead now no i deactivated Deactivated. so it's still alive i just i decided on the less draconian thing so that for instance i could turn it on download the blob and turn it off again which i predict you will do <laughs> Oh, Jeff Bezos put out his shareholder letter. Oh, we always enjoy that. That's a great read every... Should I... Should, go ahead, Stacey. Do a dramatic reading. Oh, no. Let me... I was like, let me skim it and pick the parts that matter. Keep talking about... Does Facebook. he mention Sex Compass? Because... Sex Compass has not come up no, so far. No. 
Uh, Amazon Studios will stop taking amateur scripts uh, at the end of June, so get those scripts right in. No more amateurs. Only professionals. I guess they they were doing an open call, right? Kind of. Uh, kind of. Yeah, I think it was probably more of a publicity, publicity thing. Yeah. Than, you know. yeah. It's really interesting to watch some of these big, big uh, titles be sold for huge amounts of money. We talked about the Lord of the Rings, um, the Foundation saga, Applebot Foundation. Um, the Peripheral, which was one of William Gibson. William Gibson's a great, famous science fiction author. Neuromancer really was the the, the key cyberpunk novel, and uh, his stuff is great. His most one of his most recent novels is called The Peripheral. Amazon has acquired rights to that. Is working on a uh, TV series. It's actually well, I didn't realize it was that old. Twenty fourteen. I've had it in my uh, Audible stack for some time, meaning to read it. <laughs> But you know who they got to produce it? The producers of Westworld. Ooh. Jonathan Nolan Ooh. and Lisa Joy. So that's a good thing. It has a nonlinear timeline. Uh, People love those on television. Yeah, right? Westworld's nonlinear, right? The original novel is a complicated story, writes The Verge, about time travel, divergent futures, religious protest groups, and a massive corporation called hefty mart <laughs> it takes place both in an economically barren u.s town and a post-apocalyptic london the former is set in the near future the latter a more distant one and it follows the story follows a one flynn fisher a woman who discovers a connection between the two worlds when she's testing a video game sounds perfect Jeff Bezos apparently has directed Amazon Studios to shift its programming toward higher impact series. That makes sense because they're doing a lot. You know, one of the best series uh, of the year, was it on, oh, no, I can't remember if it was on Amazon. I want to say Babylon Berlin. Do you remember if that was on Oh, Amazon? yeah, 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 it was. No, that was uh, Netflix. It was Netflix, darn it. Yeah, it was really good. Wasn't that good? I'm, I'm, I'm savoring it still. I haven't finished it. Yeah, it's one of those you can because there's a lot going on in it. Tons. Yeah. But those those flagship stories, or Lost in Space, which Netflix just released on Friday. Which, what did you think? You, uh, you're Mr. TV critic. I've I, only I seen just, the first I, episode, and it went on forever. Yeah, it was one it of those. Did. It was one of those things that really drives me crazy, where it's like one bad thing happens after another. To children. And then... I can't take that. It's to children. It takes them... It feels like hours to get this poor girl out of the ice. She's frozen solid in the ice. And it just, and then, oh, we could get her out of the, oh, no, we can't get out of the ice yet. We got it. Oh, now that happened. Oh, we got to get, oh, can't, oh. I, I don't think it's a spoiler to tell you this. <laughs> it's not going to spoil anything. In fact, if anything, it's a preparer. It's a preparer. Um, Yahoo and AOL, did you see this now that they're owned by Verizon? The new privacy policy, the new oath privacy terms, says they can read everything. The right so to read. Your, did yeah. you kill your AOL account? Well, I don't have anything of value on it. No, I never had an AOL. Did you account. kill your Yahoo? AOL, I killed a long time ago. Yahoo, I still have a Flickr account, but I don't use it for email, instant messaging, posts. I do have photos on there, but I'm yeah, primarily not using it anymore. Uh, I can't kill it. You know why I can't? Because our, but uh, I'll have to think about moving it. Our tech guy radio show uses Flickr for a monthly photo assignment. We have a tech guy group on there with oh, like 14,000 members. But I actually talked to Chris, our photographer, about maybe we got maybe we got to move this. No, but but you want to see my if you want to see my Japan pictures, Leo dot camera. I'm not using Flickr for uh, main photo sharing anymore. This is Smug Mug. And because I pay them, I'm pretty sure, although Stacy has taught me to read the privacy policy, but I'm pretty sure, in fact, I know, because I know the McCaskills wouldn't use my data for anything. So I put, this is where you, the Japan pictures will go, but it's not a social site. So, you know, you don't get the commenting and stuff. Is that terrible? No. Nope. However, if you are posting on Yahoo!, you might want to consider that Verizon has basically asserted the right to 
read everything and and uh, providing an- anonymized and or aggregated. Now, okay, <laughs> maybe you can help me with the legalese here. Anonymized and or aggregated po- reports to other parties. Other parties, they don't even say, you know, they don't even do the things like, you know, people we work with, our partners. No, just other parties. <laughs> Whoever we want. Whoever, Whoever we gives want. us the most money. I, see, I could say if they said anonymized and aggregated reports, okay, that's fine. But what is anonymized or aggregated? Does that mean we'll aggregate them but not anonymize them? Good I question. Guess. That's bad. That's a good question. That's, that's that's some very loose language there. Very loose. Yeah, we're gonna. Don't worry. We're just gonna aggregate them all. <laughs> we're gonna leave your name, address, and phone number. Put your name just, on it. We're just gonna aggregate them. Oath and it's a oath. You have company. You have lots of company. Yeah. Oath and its affiliates may share the information we receive with Verizon. So, if there if there were any incentive to get off the Yahoo platform, now you really got it. And I, yeah, as soon as I logged into Flickr, I got that. So, there's a new scam in town. Well, there's a new name for an old scam in town: exit scammers. And it's uh, of course it's cryptocurrency. A Vietnamese cryptocurrency company, Modern Tech launched an initial coin offering, an ICO, for something it called PinCoin. 32,000 people gave them $660 million. The mm-hmm. seven Vietnamese nationals who started the company have seemed to have disappeared with all the money. It's called an exit scam. You know, once a scam has a name, it pretty, that pretty much indicates it's happening a lot. So, you know what? Think about it when you buy into these ICOs. Okay, anything else you guys want to talk about or should we wrap this up? We'll wrap this up. Let me up. see. What else was here? Jordan Peele using AI to make... Once we talk about the Naked make... Egg Taco, you know, what else is there to discuss in life? How about Jordan Peele? You won't believe what Obama says in this video. During an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, uh, I don't know, uh, Killmonger was right, or uh, Ben Carson is in the sunken place, or how about this? Simply, President Trump is a total and complete d- <laughs> Now, you see, I would never say these things. It's Obama's face, but Jordan address, Peele's but voice. Someone else would. Looks like he has the mumps. Someone like Jordan Peele. This is a dangerous time. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. Wow. That's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. It may sound basic, but how we move forward in the age of information is going to be the difference between whether we survive or whether we become some kind of dystopia. Thank you. <laughs> Stay woke. Poor, that gives him two wait, things. What was that his last word? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stay woke. Stay woke. Okay. <laughs> That's BuzzFeed did that with uh, Jordan Peele, who apparently has a very good Obama impression. I did not know that. Yeah, he had. Um, that was one of his things. Uh, Key and Peele. Uh, Obama? Obama and his. Oh, well, oh, the, they did the handshaking the, one. Yeah. Luther and his anger, anger. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, that was yes. He did a very good Obama. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did do you think do you think he got Obama's permission? You know, I feel that's, like that's the kind of thing Obama might have said. Okay, you may never say that I said you could say that. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like you wouldn't make that using him. He's a public if, figure. You don't. You don't. You, you I don't. know, but if you're, I don't know. No, I'm sure he did because Obama sure would never let never let him put some of that stuff in there. I don't think. White Castle, which is my favorite fast food joint. Forget Chipotle. Ah. Forget Taco Bell. Well, yeah, Bell. I've, I forgot. But Taco Bell. The Give naked, me a you slider. Can't, you can't beat the naked egg taco. Give you me can't a slider do it. any day. It. Come on, a slider. And now you can get an impossible slider. This is pretty amazing. White Castle, which has been selling sliders, those little dollar burgers, burgers. for 97 years. 
is going to start selling them with fake meat inside. But it's not just any fake meat. It's not tofu burgers or something. This is the Impossible Burger. We had them, and they, they're, they're indistinguishable. I actually didn't taste them. Carson, did you taste them? Our staff that did taste them said they were they you couldn't tell they weren't real hamburger. Well, well this the beauty is, a is you can't tell that a White Castle is actually beef. <laughs> Slider, so. you don't know what's yeah. in there. It's mostly bun. Yeah. Impossible yeah. Foods, which uh, makes the Impossible Burger, has a seventy thousand foot production facility in Oakland, and they said we can make more than a million pounds of our plant based burger in a, a month, more than enough to supply White Castle. You can get Impossible it's, Burgers at upscale restaurants in San Francisco, but this is the first fast food. We can't, There's a Hop Dotties, which is a local chain, sells them here. Impossible Burgers? Uh-huh. Oh, have you tasted it? Mm. I haven't. I haven't I haven't gotten over to Hop Dottie in a while. My daughter doesn't like burgers or doesn't like their burgers. Oh. Un-American. Uh, you're, raising, you're raising an un-American child. I, I certainly am. Her favorite thing and her favorite food is a kale salad with quinoa. I don't know. Oh, how that God happens. bless her. Tommy, that is that is that Austin is super food. Tommy. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> I'm like you don't have to say this. No, Just I love that really though. I'm with her. Kale and quinoa. <sighs> <laughs> it's bad enough. I have to eat it. You know when I'm I'm traveling, but now I've got to have it. You know once a week when I'm home. Wow. <laughs> How'd you do that? That's miraculous. Kale and quinoa is fabulous. Healthy child, that's great. All right, let's wrap uh, this. Puppy. She, how is she on queso? Your daughter? She loves queso. Oh, okay. that's that's okay. a whole well, food group. All is oh, forgiven. Good. About there's the safe, there's, all is forgiven. Yeah, yeah, thank goodness. And the quinoa. Quinoa. It's a superfood. The superfood of the Aztecs. I think we should do a show from a Taco Bell. Oh my God! I could do. I could take you on tours of like all kinds of taco places. No, but he doesn't want taco places. No, I want to discuss you at Taco <laughs> Bell. Wants, I want to enjoy he wants that. Pepe, PepsiCo's, PepsiCo's do, imagining of Mexican food. I'm willing well, see, to do they have the taco a shell, taco shack. That's, hop. They've got the taco <laughs> the, shell, the Doritos, the, the, the Doritos. Yeah. yeah, I'm never putting that in my body. Taco. Although my husband, he's like, <laughs> it's actually pretty good. So I'm like, I told you this before, but the <laughs> best tacos in town are right across the street from Taco Bell, right? right? Elroy's taco truck. Actually, their burritos are even better. Oh. Jeff, yes. Jeff, PS Chops in the chat room says, okay, Jeff wants to fly to Texas and eat tacos at a chain franchise. <laughs> just just for the showbiz of it. Uh, we got a SpaceX Falcon going off in about 20 oh. minutes. Just a we're word of warning. No, we're not. We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up like, here. Oh. The 53rd Stacey flight to get to her wine. of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and the 8th SpaceX launch this year. Uh, you should all watch it. But right now, we're going to close things with Jeff Jarvis's number of the week. So after 11 months, Kanye West was off Twitter. He, he'd forsworn Twitter. Oh, he didn't well, go now back, he's did he? he's back. Oh, man. And he's using Twitter to write a philosophy book. Oh, Lord. Go to uh, twitter.com slash Kanye West and Leo. I think some of these deserve a Leo Laporte treatment, a dramatic reading. Sometimes I wonder about Kanye. Don't trade your authenticity for approval. I find myself getting stuck in the idea of originality and letting my ego push me to say things like, this person stole this from me. And the funny thing is, it'll be a reference I took from somewhere. Oh, Jesus. Cars! This is, you know what this is? This is like Montaigne. Montaigne? How do you say his name? Montaigne. You know who I'm yeah. talking about. Montaigne. No, it's not. Come on. He locked himself in a tower and didn't really and wrote all about his own How about thoughts. this one? <laughs> Kanye West. Cars have four wheels. Hoodies have hoods. It's amusing to me when someone says, this is an original hoodie. Bro, it's a hoodie. Trend is always late. <laughs> be here now. Be in the moment. The now is the greatest moment of our lives, and it just keeps getting better. The bad parts, the boring parts, the parts with a high anxiety. Embrace every moment for its greatness. This is life. This is the greatest movie we will ever see. Like Everything you do in life stems from either fear <laughs> or love. 
Oh, by the way, this is my book that I'm writing in real time. No publisher or publicist will tell me what to put where or how many pages to write. This is not a financial opportunity. This is an innate need to be expressive in 280 characters or less. With a few pictures of shoes. Me and my friend Anthony Schiller always ask questions about time. <laughs> is time linear? I recently did an interview where I placed a high value on time. Everything means nothing until you make it something. You are your validator. He's got 13.6 million followers. He follows one person. He's got one like and 41 tweets. And there, my friends, is a picture of Kanye's pants. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy Higginbotham, your... Up next. Pick of the week. Your ting. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Pick of the week is I got the review unit. I haven't put it in yet. What is the that? Ecobee Switch. Oh, that's Plus. the new Ecobee Switch Plus. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a <laughs> connected light switch that you put in and you can talk to Madam A. It looks like it has so. speakers and microphone in it. Is it a Madam A device in your wall? It is, but it is not, you guys, a dimmer. And yes, you do need a neutral wire. Aha! Oh. Oh, those are fat wire clips. Uh, oh, but this is nice. I like I like the the angularity of it. It's pretty deep, so that's a lot of computing power back there. It's going to be a pain to stick in a three or four gang switch if that's what you're trying to do. Um, and let's see. I'm just looking here. I'll install it and let you guys know next week how it works. Oh, not next week. The week after that. Okay. Uh, final note, uh, Carl Castle passed away at yeah, the age of 84, one of the great NPR newscasters for decades. He got his first job, there he is, at the age of 16 uh, as a newscaster in a studio that looks a lot like the one I started in. He was 84 <laughs> years old. And, of course, at the end, he found a renaissance. After he retired from NPR's Morning Edition, he found a renaissance as the announcer on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And, yes. it, and because Wait, Wait didn't have any money for prizes, the prize was Carl Castle recording your outbound voicemail message. Let me play a couple of these for you, because this is the, uh, the great voice of Carl. Hello, this is Carl Castle. Castle of National Public Radio. You have reached the home of Leslie Bayer. Leslie regrets that she's unable to take her call right now, but she'll get back to you as soon as she can. But in the meantime, sit back. Relax and listen to these profound words. I'm your boogeyman. That's what I am. I'm here to do whatever I can. Be it early morning, late afternoon, or midnight. It's never too soon. I'm your boogeyman. 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 I He's was wondering Kanye. when people got the, you know, won that prize, yeah. what they would have him do. This is the first time I've, I've heard I'm the same here. I've always wondered. Yeah, here's another one. Hello, this is Carl Castle from National Public Radio. Kristen and George are not available at this time. But before you leave a message, I'd like to sing you a little tune. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. One, one more. This is, my f <laughs> this is my favorite one. Good day. This is Carl Castle of National Public Radio. Jim and Liz are not available to take your call, but I'd like to take this time to remind you of the tremendous positive impact Jim and Liz have had on your life. And it's your contribution <laughs> that allows them to maintain the same level of quality friendship you've come to expect. Don't rely on others to support what you benefit from. By placing this call, $10 has been automatically charged to your phone bill and transferred <laughs> to Jim and Liz's bank account. Thank you for your support, and leave your message after the beep. Isn't that awesome? Oh, that's great. The great Carl Castle. Rest in purse. Yeah, peace. rest in purse. <laughs> that's what I hope to do. You'll find Mr. Jeffrey Jarvis at buzzmachine.com. He's also a professor of journalism for those lucky people who get to study with him at the beautiful Town Knight University School of Journalism at CUNY, the City University of New York. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Great to have Enjoy you back. Enjoy your vacay, boss. I shall, I shall, I shall. Can't wait. I'm minutes away. Stacy Higginbotham, she is at Stacy on IOT.com. Listen to her interview where where she'll talk with uh, the guy, Gail, what's his name, Galen? 
Galen Hunt. Hunt. I don't know why I can't remember that. Galen Hunt about Azure Sphere, the amazing kind of surprising new product from uh, Microsoft on IoT. And uh, get her uh, Stacy on IoT newsletter. It's free and a, a must subscribe. Stacy, we'll see you in two weeks. Yes. Yes. And I'll see you in three weeks because I'm off on vacation. Uh, Jason Howell will be filling in for me for the next couple of weeks. And a reminder, we'll be at a new, uh, a one-time only new time uh, when we come back, when I come back, uh, because of Google I.O. and uh, Microsoft Build. We're going to move uh, from Wednesday to Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 20.30 UTC. And then we'll be back on Wednesdays after that. You can watch, the, you know, if that's confusing, you can always watch the show on demand. It's always at the same place, twit.tv slash twig. Or subscribe in your podcast program and you get every episode the minutes available. You don't have to worry about our schedule. You just have it. Thanks for being here and I'll see you in a couple of weeks on Twig. Bye-bye.